Good afternoon and welcome. Well, there you go. We've got three quarters of the year already gone, and this is a chance to be able to take a look at the long-term moving averages for your cryptocurrency portfolio. Well, at least for the eight regularly reviewed cryptos that we do on a weekly basis. Now, I've done this before and uh, do this every three months just to basically get an idea in terms of how the long-term performance is going. So you can always take a look back at the former videos as well. Uh, first time basically doing this through trading view though in relation to this. And also the first time actually introducing a newer one as well too in terms of a newer indicator of 10 month moving average as well. I've given a bit more of a description of this in the other video I've just created as well. I'll put a link up the top here as well too, so you can take a look at that. Um, but essentially what that is, is that that's looking at the overall markets. But um, I've given a bit, bit of a description as to what the 10 month moving average is all about. I won't delve into it any more here, just in terms of uh, keeping the time, but just to basically give you an idea as to what that's all about, duck across to that video, you'll be able to have a look in terms of what that's all about there. Okay, let's jump into it. So. Going in the same type of order as what we normally do on the weekly videos. Firstly, starting off with Bitcoin. Now, looking firstly at the 30 week moving average in terms of Bitcoin, we can see taking a look at this chart here. Now, this just disregard pretty much the last two bars of each of the weekly charts that we're looking at, because essentially what we're looking at there are the newer months in terms of the October months. Um, but overall, we're looking here in terms of the last week of September. Now, this particular week here, it closed above the 30 week moving average in relation to Bitcoin. So just basically saved itself, closing above the 30 week moving average in relation to Bitcoin for the end of the third quarter. But overall, it hadn't performed too badly for that quarter since June. So it actually had performed okay above the 30 week moving average for a majority of the quarter, but then the rest of the quarter it actually performed beneath the 30 week moving average. So in terms of 30 week moving averages or with, with these lines here, when trading above generally is an area where you wish to be. Trading below is not the area you want to be in terms of actually owning the actual cryptocurrency in this particular case we're talking about. So that's what we're looking at the 30 week moving average. If we flip across in terms of looking at the monthly moving average, not so bad, okay? So overall, we're not looking at a bearish case per se in relation to Bitcoin. So that's something uh, for all the Bitcoin holders out there, you'd probably be all going, hey, this is all fantastic. So in that way, okay. But you can see there was actually quite a bearish period there for quite some time, probably until around about here, um, when it actually started closing above it at the end of January. But since January, it's been performing quite okay, bouncing off it at the end of September. Where it goes from here is the major question. So in terms of fine tuning, be sure to take a look at the weekly videos and be able to actually see what the story is from there in terms of figuring out where the levels are, what the circumstances are, and also like we've been discussing in the last couple of videos in particular, noting that Ethereum in particular appears to be acting as a bit of an anchor, potentially holding down a lot of the other cryptocurrencies when Ethereum and Bitcoin were previously acting in tandem and moving along quite nicely together. But for some reason now, Ethereum's not working as well in terms of actually moving forward as much as it was previously alongside Bitcoin. And you're probably saying, why is he, why are you picking on Ethereum in that way? Well, take a look at the next chart, you'll understand why, because overall, this is Ethereum. And now you can see why I'm always saying it's acting as an anchor. It's basically falling beneath the 30 week moving average like it has been doing since August. Now, overall, it really has been dragging its heels. It's been falling, falling quite considerably in the grand scheme of things, not performing. It's been hitting resistances. You go back to the weekly videos overall have been performing, have been doing for quite some time. And you can really see that it continually hits resistances, continually hits its head, bounces backwards, and that's pretty much about it. And it seems to be dragging everything else along with it. Now, overall, since August, it's been beneath the 30-week moving average. That's the thing that we're seeing right now in terms of this chart. 
Let's now flip across to the monthly moving average, and you can see it actually closed beneath the monthly moving average as well. So we've got some concordance here, closed beneath the monthly moving average in August as well. So it's not boding all that great for even the long-term holders in terms of Ethereum in relation to this as well. So overall, something to potentially have a bit of a caution about. Obviously, I'm not a financial advisor, but definitely something to think about in relation to, okay, maybe it might be a time to be able to think about, maybe thinking, about, well, should I be holding this when it starts pushing itself upwards rather than just hoping and praying and then just keeping it watching dwindling downwards if it still keeps hitting its head and falling in that way. So have a look in terms of how your performance is going in that way. That might be something to consider is all, all the charts are basically suggesting at this point in time. So that's the circumstance there with Ethereum, especially if it keeps on bumping its head against the 30-week moving average, which we're seeing at this stage now. Moving across to Bitcoin Cash. Now with Bitcoin Cash, we all know that's been performing extremely well for quite some time. There's been some previous videos that have actually been covering there um, in relation to that. There was a big breakout that occurred and uh, the levels of interest that had actually broken through and then it just shot right off. It was all covered in previous videos quite some time ago. Now overall, that's actually gone right up through the 30-week moving average, come right back down. Looks as though it's tested that quite nicely, even through these times here during the past quarter. And overall, seems to be doing quite okay at this stage. Let's flip across to the 30 month, oh, sorry, the 10 month moving average. And overall, the end of last month, we have a close well above the 10 month moving average. So if you're a long-term holder of this, it doesn't seem to be anything too much to worry about there. Once again, probably that recommendation to fine tune the fine tune the levels see how things are going depending on where you entered obviously as well too because everything's all relative so if you entered well above those certain areas of where it is right now you might be a little bit more concerned it really just depends in terms of your own entry points your own risk tolerance in relation to all of those aspects as well litecoin looking a little sick Okay, Litecoin is well beneath the 30-week moving average as overall, as you can see from here, and that fell beneath the 30-week moving average back there in July. Now, following along with the weekly videos that have been given along so far as well too, you would have been seeing that for quite some time as well too. So it's, it's quite unfortunate in relation to this cryptocurrency, but there has been something wrong with this for quite some time. If we flip across to the 10-month moving average, you can really see that's quite evident there and close beneath that back in August for sure. So overall, the warning signs have been there, unfortunately, and it's been one of those things that have really, really hit, been hit quite hard. So with this one, you'd want to at least see that get above the 30-week moving average before you'd really be considering, you know, jumping back into that one there. But this one's been hit really, really badly. Polkadot, we've been going through that on the, uh, the weekly videos as well. This is at its all-time lows, essentially. And, you know, you, you've really got to be um, looking at yourself as to, okay, well, what point to where where do the bulls regain control in relation to this? What's the story there? The indicators overall are quite bearish. And, um, you know, it's, it's a tough one. It's a real tough one. I really feel for the holders on this one here. And, um, you know, you've, you've really got to basically say, okay, well, it's looking as though that, um, you know, at the present time, it's what, $5.09 $5 in terms of the 30-week moving average. You'd have to get at least above that before anyone's really interested in terms of buying this one as well. Um, once again, fine-tune that as well too with the weekly videos, but even the monthly, you know, this this one is exceptionally ugly. You look at this there. The monthly, the 10-month 10 10 month moving average, it has not closed above the 10-month moving average since back in 2021. That's hard. That's hard to deal with in terms of anyone who has owned that at all, especially anyone who actually purchased that back up here in 2021. That's a considerable loss, a really considerable loss. So I really feel for anyone who's actually, um, who has actually owned that one. Solana. Now Solana, taking a look here at the end of September, did close above 
the 30 week moving average. So there is some signs of life of this potentially coming back and moving, moving back into the upward direction. It's a matter of seeing where this does go. Um, and uh, yeah, if there is some bullish tendencies coming through. You can see that coming through even with the DMI and also with the RSI as well. Going across the monthly moving average, we are seeing a bit of a swing up occurring here as well. Now that did close in September above the monthly moving average as well. So some positive signs are definitely coming along here. It really is now a matter of just seeing where it does go in, in this particular month here too. But things are looking reasonably decent here. So we've now got a few. We're looking at Bitcoin, we're looking at Bitcoin Cash, we're looking at Solana based on these charts here. So look at the fine tune from the weekly videos to be able to see where the potential entry points are, where the um, points of interest are in terms of um, potential bidders and where the bulls would be getting back in control in relation to these particular, these particular cryptos. Dogecoin, oh, let me just bring this chart up. You can see that's beneath the 30 week moving average there for Dogecoin as well. It's looking pretty pretty rough going as well there for Dogecoin, unfortunately. And you can see also the bearish tendencies are pretty strong there as well on the 30 week moving average. Let's flip across to the monthly moving average and that has been beneath the 10 month moving average there as well for a considerable period of time too. It hasn't closed above the 10 month moving average since the beginning of 2023, back in January. So that's been pretty rough going for anyone holding Dogecoin as well too. So I feel for you guys as well. Um, it's pretty rough going when things like that just continue to slide, unfortunately. And last but not least, we're looking at Cardano. Now in terms of Cardano, it looks like a pretty similar situation going on with that as well, closing firmly beneath the 30 week moving average there too. Flip across to the monthly and very similar situation, unfortunately. This one looks very similar to Polkadot out of all honesty, but it hasn't reached the all-time lows like Polkadot has. Now, in relation to this, it hasn't closed above the 10 monthly moving average. No, it didn't there. It hasn't closed above it since 2021 either. So another hard luck story, unfortunately, in terms of this particular cryptocurrency as well. So really, really tough going. Have a look at the um, the weekly videos as well on this one here to see where um, the levels of interest are in terms of where you know the bidders could at least get some you know some interest of actually where it might be of interest of some buying and then take a look at your risk profile. That's all I can suggest for something like Cardano, Dogecoin, um, and also with Polkadot because if you're holding those still, you know. It's tough to be in a hope and pray situation with any of those kind of circumstances there. And, um, you know, you could be potentially utilizing your capital elsewhere, maybe in some of those other cryptocurrencies we mentioned where there is some positive momentum. Um, possibly utilize it in there, build up some capital there, perhaps there might be some use there and then be able to jump back into this when there is some movement. That could be some way of being able to look at this. So I hope that's helped. Um, that's the eight that are regularly reviewed on a weekly basis. Um, that's uh, something to take a look at there, something to ponder about and have a think about there too. Um, but yeah, come across, come across some and take a look at these on a weekly basis as well in terms of the reviews that I do there. Those charts there will give you an indication in terms of where the, the buyer's level of interests are, when they change, what the circumstances are in terms of the support levels, the levels of interest in terms of the, the buyer's interest and also the resistance levels, where over the last few weeks in particular, they just basically been hitting their head and they've been bouncing right back from. So they're the kind of things to really be aware of and um, you know what you can potentially do to be able to take a look at your positions on those. So have a look at those. Also, feel free to come across the ASX Traders United Facebook page as well. We'd love to have you on board over there. We do have competitions running regularly there as well. It's a live competition. You can join at any time. You can trade anything you like, including cryptos but also stocks from around the world. You can choose anything you wish. You can go long, you can go short, anything you like using real-time prices. So yeah, come across. And we've got a really, really good supportive group of people there as well. Great people to have a chat with, great people to meet up with, whatever you wish to do. And they're fantastic. Um, so yeah, come across. In the meantime, Obviously, we've got this particular video here. We've got uh, the, week, the latest weekly video. We've got the stock video as well. You can take a look at there. 
um, both the weekly video as well as the long-term um, ranges like I've just created here for this one too. Plenty to take a look at. Um, so <laughs> just, yeah, go go for, go through the channel and have a look there. Like and subscribe, do whatever you wish in terms of things there. Support the channel in whatever way you wish as well too. It'd be great. we really appreciate it. Until next time, I'll catch up with you again next week in terms of the normal, regular videos. And uh, look, Enjoy your trading week in the meantime as well, and I'll catch up with you again soon. Thank you very much for your time. Bye for now.